Hi everyone. Good evening, everyone. Okay, if you can hear us, okay, can you type out what do you feel is the what's happening to the market right now? Do you think there's a lot of volatility? If you think that there's a lot of volatility, maybe you can type V. Or if you think that there are a lot of opportunities, then maybe you can type O in the chat. So let us know what you think about the market. Do you think it's volatile, or do you think that it's actually full of opportunities? All right. So in the meantime, tonight it's gonna be super super exciting because not only me, I have Isabella here, and in fact, right just now she was just going through her material with me, I saw that, wow, there's a lot of uh, very, very useful insights that she's going to share with you into the market, as well as really guiding you through, right, together with us, you know, in, in this webinar, how can we navigate through this uncertainty, all right? So so in the meantime, for those who just keep came in, in just came in, all right, I can see that Eugene said that it's going to be opportunity time, okay? Market is already open. <laughs> it, it went down a little bit today, okay? Let's see what opportunities are there. That, right? How about other people? To you, do you feel that it's opportunistic or do you think that it's volatile right now? Hi, good to see every single one of you. Fantastic, right? So in the meantime, okay, let's get Isabella to start sharing, okay? And feel free to ask us additional questions if you have uh, throughout this uh, sharing and, and also share with us what are your thoughts about the current market as well, okay? So Isa, let's get started. Yay, yay, thanks Chloe, thanks Chloe, and thank you for, for the people who actually tuned with us at such a late timing. Yes, the market has opened already, we are all so excited about what's actually happened in the market, um, but um, nevertheless, thank you for tuning, uh, tuning in with us. Let me just open my slides. Give me a wow. Yes. This is the one. Okay, you probably can see my slide, right? Yes, I can. I can see you right now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, by the okay, way, so... way, at first, okay, just want to say that at first we actually invited Mary to come for this webinar, but then she's not feeling very well. So unfortunately, she couldn't join us. But regardless, you're going to get a lot of value. You're going to learn a lot from both of us as well. All right. So let's get started. Okay. So today I'm actually, we are going to talk about this very interesting phenomenon about the market right now, yeah? So a lot of people have actually wondered, you know, and a lot of people have actually wondered what is happening to the market right now. Is the market going up? What is going down? What is it going sideways? It's, it's a lot of noises in the market if you guys actually think about it. Lah. So, so today we wanted to give you a bit more clarity on how can you navigate the market amidst all the chaos that is happening nowadays, amidst all the, all the noises in the financial industry, in the AI, you know, in, in all sorts, okay? We want to give you a, a, a particular roadmap or clarity on how you can continue investing as well, right? So without further ado, yeah, this is um, the gist of what we are going to cover. Is it, is it too uncertain to invest, right? Let me show you something that is very interesting that I actually researched earlier and I shared with Chloe as well. Uh, okay. Yeah. Not, so maybe, not, Jita. While, while Isa is sharing the screen, maybe you guys can, can let us know as well. Do you think it's uncertain to invest right now? If you feel a little bit of uncertainty, maybe you can type you in the chat. You stands for uncertainty. Yes, Isa, we are seeing your screen as well right now. Okay, cool, right. So according to this key metrics, right, um, the earning insight la, actually being published on the April 6, 2023, the earning, right, for Q1 2023, the estimated earning decline for the S&P 500 is actually um, estimated to be about 6.8% decline. So what it says is that if 6.8% decline is the actual decline for the quarter in Q1 2023, it will mark the largest earning decline reported by the index since quarter 2, 2020. So guys, what happened in quarter 2, 2020? Mm. Let us know. Let us know. All yeah, right? guys, remember, it's only like, what, less than three years ago. <laughs> What yeah. time? It's like three years already. I think really time flies. Time flies <laughs> yeah. without, without realizing. Yeah, I believe everybody still remember that day, right? Where where the news becomes so so big, you know, like like you kind of cannot go anywhere because of the lockdown. And then as a result, you know, the stock market tanked tremendously during that short period of time. Yes, I, sh I still remember that before the market actually, uh, before the whole, uh, all the countries closed the borders and all, I was still in US. I was like, oh, I was still in US and I came back and everything is locked down already. So it's a pretty, pretty, wow, everything moved so fast kind of period. Yeah, so let me just continue. 
if you look at the earning decline, Q1 2023, we're expecting a estimated 6.8% decline. In terms of earning guidance for Q1 2023, 78 S&P 500 companies have issued negative EPS guidance and only 28, guys, 78 S&P 500 companies have issued negative EPS guidance. There's only 28 S&P 500 companies that have issued positive EPS guidance. What does it mean? Let me scroll down a bit more. Usually, right, there's only about 97 companies on average to, to actually announce their transparency in terms of their EPS guidance. But as of 6th of April, 106 companies have already issued. And we, and we could see that majority of those companies have already issued, right, are pretty pessimistic about the Q1 result. Right, so so that so there's a lot of noise that is happening in the market, and let me go back to the slide because it's pretty interesting, yeah, of what we are actually looking at. This my slide. Yeah, I'm super excited. I like. I think the audience, some of them are very excited as well. <laughs> right. So 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 if you look at look at this particular look at this particular um S and P five hundred chart that I pull out um a couple of days ago lah because I do homework ma right so I pull out a couple of days ago it's not the latest we could have seen that since two thousand and twenty two or rather late twenty twenty one the market is actually on a very distinct straight downtrend very distinct all right and what happened next. Recently, since about uh, March there about, we saw a slow breakout from a bearish trend. There are certain gurus that I've seen online, there are certain people, I, I don't know, self-proclaimed gurus or people or investors, they say that the market has rebounded into a positive trend. Come on guys, look at, look at my solid black line. Does that in any way look positive to you? I'm not sure about you, lah, but for me, but let me know in the chat what do you think. Do you think it's really positive? Because to me, right, it looks pretty much flat, you know. You know, you know, guys, um, if you guys know that I, I was previously from healthcare, I call a straight flat line called A systole. Like a you know, um the end of life, lah, A systole, like where, where your heartbeat is on the on a straight flat line. Right? So, 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 so no, it doesn't it. look yeah it's the story I, I don't want to put it so bluntly like end of life man. yeah so the heartbeat not moving anymore so so it's, it's down it's a straight flat line eh. it's not a bullish trend it is a consolidation phase what essentially is happening in the market right now is that we are moving from the floor to the ceiling that's all we have not seen a very positive upwards trend Right, where high is getting higher, low is getting higher. That is a straightaway bullish trend. But this is not. It is a consolidation phase. All right. So there's a lot of noises that's happening in the market as well. Right. Um, Silicon Valley bank. What is happening in Silicon Valley? What happened? Collapse lah, huh? Then we also got the Credit Suisse. Also collapse lah. Essentially, what does it say? Our financial, not not our lah. The financial market in in US is probably in in a bit of chaos during then. There's a lot of fear in the financial market when Silicon Valley Bank. But then, but, but then guys, I want you all to be very, very certain. We can say that the people, people out there can say that the financial market is in, in, in a mess. Uh, people out there can say that the, the financial market is doomed. The banks are doomed in US. But then the question is, do we actually understand what happened to these individual banks that caused its down, this is failure? It is not, if it's something that is it's because of over leveraging, because of derivatives that is actually um, tied down to mortgage or whatsoever, that caused a downfall, like the Lehman Brothers in 2008, then probably, yes, the financial market is in chaos. But now, Silicon Valley Bank is not because of that, it's because of over concentration. Credit Suisse is something that's been dragging for so long already. We knew what was the cause of it. It's not something that is um, sudden. And in all financial crises, we, we all financial crisis is not something that it is like a, like um you knew there's a problem and then you don't solve the problem, let the problem get worsen and then let the situation go out of hand. It doesn't work that way, right? So when the when when the news already broke out, the the government stepped in, helped the financial market, supported it. It did not fail as a whole. Right, you will see that the Fed, what will Fed do? I mean, what will government do? Print a bit more money, la. In US, right? Print a bit more money, settle it, make everybody happy, and then everybody have confidence, and, and life goes on. All right, and then the latest news we got 
Mr. Trump, our popular Mr. Trump, he made a, a, a comment, um, or rather, in, he co- made a comment in the interview. What did he say, guys? What did he say? Let me know in the chat. Let me, let me know in the chat. I can't really yeah. see your... We, have, we your... have more We have more audience streaming in right now. Yeah, maybe, guys, if you know what did Donald Trump say recently, <laughs> maybe you can type it in the chat as well. Oh, he said you cannot see the comments at the at the side. Cannot... I wouldn't oh. be able to see because I'm sharing my screen. Ah, no wonder, no wonder. Well, we, well, maybe you can occasionally unshare, then you can see what is happening to the audience right now. I think they're getting really excited. <laughs> okay, let me see. Let me, uh, oh, Ken says, um, uh, now a bit dangerous. Oh, hi, Kelvin. Hi, Kelvin. Hi. All right. Yes, I think yeah. I think the audience are slowly typing their answers as well. Uh, but do let us know if you know that what happened to uh Donald Trump recently. What did he say? And Isa can continue to share as well. Yeah. Okay. Let me just go back to my my PowerPoint. Yeah. So so Donald Trump. Uh, wow. This is Donald Trump. Uh, he created so much issues. You know, just recently, actually not recently, a couple of weeks ago, I got a friend suddenly message me. Eh. My friend actually is my ex teacher, like my primary school. He suddenly messaged me and say. Isa, what do you think is the future of USD? Is USD going to collapse because Donald Trump says so? I'm like, huh? Huh? So there's a, there's a lot of different camps of people with different perspectives on, on the USD, on whether the China, the, the Russian, the, the, the Brazil, whether the BRIC is actually going to take over USD. But guys, let me know what you think about it. Let us know what you think about it because we do have our own conviction about this as well. Let me let me unshare screen. Uh. Let me let me okay, let me see. Anybody commenting? Ah yeah, guys, you need to have an idea of what is actually happening. That one very important. Uh. Okay. Without <laughs> can I, nobody want to tell me your perspective. I'm a bit sad. But anyway, anyway, that is a whole new topic, a whole new story for another time. But Chloe, what do you think? Okay, in my opinion, I think it's like okay, maybe in the first place, let me share the screen now, uh, just in case uh people uh don't know what is Isa talking about. Hold on, uh, let me just find the article. Uh okay, hold on. Uh okay, this one. All right. So okay, there you go. Let me share the article so that you guys understand the context of uh what are we talking about right now. Yeah, we have MW saying that it's brick B R I C. All right, so uh, Donald Trump said that China is trying to replace the dollar as number one currency. So that's why a lot of people are, in fact, also some, some of the students also messaged me as well, thinking, uh, asking, oh, what do you think about, oh, will, then will, will China IMB to eventually take over USD, then the, dimi- the power of US uh, will diminish as a result. Well, I think this is a very long, uh, it, I think it may eventually happen, right? Because we can see that the, with China rising, right? Uh, uh, in the past few decades, it has been growing rapidly. But in order for it to take over USD as a dominant currency, uh, I think it's going to take a long, long time. Especially we know that China also has this, uh, this tendency to also want to control its currency. Uh, a lot of rich people in China, they actually want to get their currency out of, uh, not in terms of RMB, they want to get convert to other dollars as well, right? So that uh, they, has, they have more control over their own currency, over their assets. So I think it will take a long time before this will eventually happen so in the near term or I or at least in the next 10 years in my opinion I think US dollar will still be the the main currency uh, uh that as the dominant uh as a dominant global power nevertheless what do you think Isa? honestly for me my overall thing is I don't think that will happen in my lifetime <laughs> <What>? <laughs> honestly I don't think because if you look at the whole big picture right this brick currency is not the first thing that is happening in, 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 in the economy. If we look into if we look into history, we also have our euro. What is happening in Euro? Euro, euro is stronger than USD, sure. But is, is Euro the dominating countries for all? No. Everyone will say composition of USD as well. How many countries are actually using USD in, in comparison to Chinese yuan or, or Russian rupees? Is, is it rupees? Uh? I, I, I don't know. Yeah, so so it's, 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 it's an entire new whole um one lah. It's a whole new knowledge by itself uh, that we cannot cover in five minutes. But honestly, I don't think it will happen in our lifetime. Like. 
we, we should we should do that. We should do that the next time. I think it's very interesting to actually see how 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 it's actually going to progress and, and stuff like that. China needs to solve reputation Stop issues. The reputation issue. Definitely. China needs to solve a lot of issues, not only reputation. <laughs> all right, all right. Let me let me just continue. I think we digress a bit already. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is pretty exciting. So if you look at the, the whole if overall economy, right, the economy now is still very, very strong. I'm like, oh, when is the recession going to come? But recession just put your life. It's not coming. I do not know why, but it must come. I mean, I hope lah. I hope long, too long this come. Because why? We want to actually invest in cheaper companies. If there's a recession, things get cheaper. Then we want to be greedy when others are fearful, right? Be fearful when others are greedy, right? This is what Warren Buffett say, and I totally subscribe to that lah. So currently in the economy, we see positive GB, uh, GDP unemployment rate is still low. low. I think the latest was 3.5%, right? Yeah. Then yeah. Yeah. Consumer, yeah, consumer sentiment is still high. Eh. I was like, wow, okay, people are still spending money. People are still employed. I don't think recession is coming anytime soon, but I hope that it does. And what happened to our stock market? It's pretty much beaten um, largely influenced by all this news that is actually uh, being published. La. So we see so far as like up, down, up, down, up, down, left, right. People are scared. One day scared, one day um, positive, you know. There's no there's no very concrete um, um, sentiments that, that, that is being published in the news outlet. So guys, moral of the story, don't depend on news because it is never mm-hmm. accurate. It is never... A, a leading indicator of what is actually happening. Okay, very important. So we want to know why exactly are you investing? Why? Because having this clarity will give you a edge over confusion. If you are not clear, that means you're just confused. Ah, simple. All right. So guys, you need to really understand what are you investing in. All right. Do you actually understand? the companies that you are investing in. Is this company something of within your circle of competency that you actually know very clear? What is this company? What is the business model? What is the management? What is this, uh, the earning power? Whether the company is going to sustain, right? You need to understand. So what do you understand about the business model? If you don't understand, if you think that company is something that you think you know, uh, you think you know that I suppose that you don't really, really know. Uh. For example, you know when um <laughs> so this is one one stupid thing that I did the other time like you know you know like when SVP uh during that after the SVP collapse then there's actually a conversation about trial swap right I I, I hope that you guys still remember there's a conversation about trial swap then I was like no lah trial swap you're not the one lah trial swap is actually quite strong so on that that particular night itself I put in my order for trial swap. Oh, I really put in, you know, I was like so confident. I put in my order for Charles. So I wanted to actually see the rebound of Charles. So I wanted to wanted to invest in Charles all of a sudden. All right. And then when the market, no, ding, 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 I was like, I was like, um, okay, I am, what is my investing strategy again? Am I going in for the short term just to see Charles Swap increase a bit? And then what, what significant does it give me? Right? Am I going to go in for long term or short term? What 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 is my strategy over there? So so I was like, no lah, I cannot do this lah. I cannot do this. If I'm only going in just because it's been bitten a lot, it's probably going to rebound for a bit. And I don't really know about the industry. I don't really understand about the business model. I know maybe a little bit because I didn't have much time to do my research as well. Is this a company that you really really want to invest in? Right, mm-hmm. how much you understand it? If one fine day, I think Charles Swap actually went down a little bit more like, after that day. Uh, I think my point of entry was about my supposedly point of entry is about $55. The last that I saw was 49 And if mm-hmm. I don't really understand what is Charles Swap, then I see 49 then I'll be I'll be scared, right? I'll be confused, right? Then I'll be like, what am I am I <laughs> what am I doing my investing? So so guys. You, you can't have this kind of a confusion on what you do. So what happened during that is, before my order got triggered, I cancelled my order because it is not the short-term gain that you want to, to, to take. You want to write on the trend. You want to, be, you want to understand what is going on, write on the trend and profit long-term. This mm. is investing, right? Not, not a short-term gain. So what you think you know might not be actually what you actually know. It's very important to gain the clarity over there, lah. Huh? And, yeah, and how I'm much sure. you think about? Sorry. Yeah, I just want to add that I, I really feel that whatever you're sharing right now, it's 
very insightful. Like how many guys felt, felt, felt that actually sometimes this is exactly what you will go through as well. As you probably hear, wow, there's so many stocks out there that is currently uh, under discount because there's a lot of volatility. For example, a lot of bank stocks have actually come down quite a lot. Very often, people will just tend to jump into the market. And Isabella shared with us uh, transparently how she also went through this emotion cycle as well. But very importantly, at the end of the day, really use this incident to remind yourself, right? Before you make any form of investment, decision do you truly understand the company right because for example uh recently pete also said that wow chelsea is a very good company so i heard that i also have this tendency oh maybe i should look deeper into it but then i have not made, made any investment decision for now is because like just like what isa said i have not done my due diligence yet so it's so important that you actually do your due diligence before investing in any company all right, so can everybody help to type D-Y-O-D-D in the chat? That means do your due diligence. Use it to remind yourself as well as you're learning in this uh, sharing together with us. Yeah, Isa, you can continue. Yeah, so, so in any kind of investing, if you don't want to do all your research, you don't want to do all your analysis, then go for passive investing, la, like your, your index fund, your S&P 500, whatsoever, or even go for unit trust because you got a professional to do it for you. But if you want to do individual stocks, la, guys, you must do your own due diligence because it's something that, that it will, the volatility will affect you. I want, to sleep, I want to sleep well at night and I hope that you guys sleep well at night also. Very, very important because why? Ultimately, nobody but yourself are responsible for the end result right so that being said coming to my last point what do you understand about the economy so investing investing itself right is a, is a, is a, is a knowledge by itself individual companies how do you invest in individual companies is a is a share one like is a knowledge by itself but ultimately right you want to know that how is the whole economy going to affect the prices of the particular companies as well because everything works in tandem it is never separated so how much do you understand about the economy that's something that as investors we need to understand also. Um, moving forward, oh, what is your strategy? Okay, so so I, I added in what is your strategy because I met some um, some people, they said that they, they actually mentioned that they are an investor, but eh, but investor was like, eh, you will invest for a few months, then you will see the high swing high, then you want to take out, then you see a swing low, then you want to put in. I was like, uh, swing high, sorry, swing high take profit, swing low. You want to put in? I was like, hey, investor got uh in out in out in out one man. I was like, uh, okay, you, okay, you can do that. But then, if you want to play the game long term, is mm. that the strategy that you want to employ? Does this strategy actually work for you? Is this the strategy that Warren Buffett himself actually um advocate? So you want to understand what is your strategy in investing? Are you playing swing trading, or are you doing long term investing? Because although the the differences is very minute, there is a difference. All right. Nobody can time the market accurately. Nobody lah. Huh? This is why Warren Buffett doesn't do that. And moving forward, let me do a bit of recap also. I, I know that eh, I know that Chloe actually just did the, the whole BOS um, module recently as well. Um, mm. I do not know how many of you guys have actually um, revised on your BOS module. But nevertheless, let me just do a bit of a revision here also. Lah, right? Okay. First up, you need to understand what is the business model. Is this company even making money or is the business not making money mm -hmm. or how does the business even operate? This is something that is very important as investors. We want to know, right? On top of the business model, how the company operates, you want to know whether there's any sustainable comparative comparative advantage can this business grow in the long term with close two eyes do you think that microsoft today versus 10 years later will be still existential do you think google will exist 10 years later we want to be very certain that the company has this comparative advantage that it will be sustainable in the long the term and of course in every particular business right, there is a business risk we need to understand what is the risk as investors, we are going to put our money with the business because we are going to own part of the business right now. What are the risks that we are going to undertake? What are the risks that the business is going to face? All right. What is the management leadership like? Are they trustable? Are they giving out so many red flags, warning signs like how Credit Suisse actually gave? How is the management leading the companies? Are they working towards their mission and vision? Or are they just, I don't know, anyhow running the company? right valuation of business 
Warren Buffett says invest in good businesses, strong leadership at a reasonable price. We want to know the valuation of business. Is it reasonable or not? Is it overvalued? Is it, is it undervalued? Is it, I, I don't know, is it making money? You know, we want to know what is the valuation of the business. Um, a bit of a math here, a bit, a bit, but not, it is um, not anything rocket science. Understandable. I, I went for Chloe's, uh, um, I went for Chloe's uh, revision. She was awesome. Understand it very well. <laughs> and also, last but not least, you want to know what is your personal conviction and strategy in investing also. Right? Why do I put it in additionally? Why do I put it in? Because we can know everything. But if you are not comfortable in investing, you are not comfortable investing. Don't try to force yourself just because that you think you know, but you're just not comfortable. Right? I think I know Charles Swap, but I'm not comfortable. So do I want to force myself in just because people say it's good, just because I think there will be a momentary rebound? Not really, right? So you want to actually target the sweet spot, all right, in the center, mm -hmm. in sweet spot, yeah. all right? So, and just like what Isabella, yeah, just like what Isabella said, like all this are uh, something that we have been teaching to uh to to you guys, right? So most importantly is like um keep on reading as well because all these are not something that you can immediately see from like the number sometimes the economic mode, competitive advantage or risk. You do need to read a little bit more about different companies, uh, and even if even better, like check with people who have the um the industrial knowledge right uh, behind them and that's how you can get those insights much quickly as well and right now you can even use chat gpt to get uh more investing insights of like what we recently share so so make sure you use different kind of tools to level up as well yeah yeah so moving on with all the uncertainties with all the issues that's happening in the economy right now how do we navigate the u.s economy right so looking at back, back at this particular chart uh, that I copy and paste, uh, of course, I uh, copy and paste. <laughs> Since the height of 2022, we've already seen a 15% decline in S&P 500. And the question here I want to ask you guys is, right, S&P has declined by 15%. Eh? Does it mean that it's undervalued? Or rather, the components in S&P is actually all undervalued? Because S&P dropped 15%. Let me, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat. In the meantime, in the meantime, Chloe, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, what's your question again? Do you think that the SP currently is undervalued? Or rather, do you think that the comp all the components in SP is undervalued? Okay, I feel that uh currently the P ratio of SP 500 is about 21 times. I wouldn't say it's undervalued, but I wouldn't say that it's expensive either. So I think some of the companies are actually pretty fair value. So uh that that is why it's actually really good to start investing if you have not, but maybe don't need to pour in a lot of cash, maybe 50% of your cash so that you know that you're staying invested. If the market continues to run up, your 50% is making money for you. However, if the market does have pullback from now on, then you can use the remaining 15% to actually invest even more. Yeah, love it, love it. So like what SW Tom says, S&P, he says no fair, fair value. Why is it fair value S&P dropped by 15%? Why is it fair? Because it's an average of everything. Let me go on to the next uh, chart. This is how S&P is being weighed. S&P 500 is value weight. What does it mean? It's the number of share price, I mean, sorry, the share price times the number of outstanding stocks. And how does it, and it's equals to market capitalization divided by total market capitalization. What does it mean? Very simple. Companies with larger market caps actually weigh more heavily. So without, without much consideration or rather off your fingers, can you name us some of the big cap stocks in S&P? Um, type in the chat, let us know, right? Because we, we do, I, I do acknowledge that uh, sometimes for StreamYard, there's actually a five to six seconds delay. So type in the chat, let us know, what are some of the large cap stocks in S&P 500? A, A, APL, Apple, Apple, yes. In fact, you see from the FinVis, right, this the, the background chart, la, you can see that the bigger squares, right, are actually the larger cap stocks. Very simple. The smaller cap stocks or, or the, the, the non-existential one, then you, you cannot even see it. La. So this is how FinVis actually visualized the whole thing. Pretty interesting. You got Microsoft, you got the FANG stocks, Microsoft, Apple, la, Google, la, Navida, also pretty big, la, Meta, you know all these companies, Amazon, Tesla, Tesla is getting bigger as well. Yeah, so we all these big tech stocks and majority is in tech, 
when, when there's a situation of high inflation, we saw high interest rate, and what is the highest decline? Also in tech stocks. Lah. That's why you see 15% dis- decline on in S&P 500, mainly from where? Mainly from tech stocks. Lah. All right. So so pretty much pretty much that that the, the whole S P is actually affected a lot a lot. I, I would I would say that other sectors are also being uh, affected, but majority is still in tech, right? And does it mean that all the other companies are, or or there are no companies that are overvalued in this in this S P five hundred? No la, no la. It's not like that. Say one because why? You go to the next uh page. We see, in terms of sector breakdown. The information technology, which is the tech stock, is 29.3% of the S&P. We've got other smaller uh, percentage, like for example, your utilities, materials, uh, real estate, la, your energy, your consumer staples. Do you think that this industry actually went down together with tech stocks? Maybe not. Maybe not. The last time I did my research, right, I saw that utilities actually went up a lot, significantly a lot. So for people who actually... um decides to, to, to enter S&P just because S&P um, is undervalued. Or rather, you close two eyes, you pick any companies in S&P is undervalued. That is a myth. That is a myth, guys. So be sure what is actually the composition of, of, of S&P. S&P is also rebalanced on a quarterly basis. All right? So if there's any major shift in the, in the weightage of the company, the capitalization, you will see major changes as well. All right, that's something very important that we need to actually um, be aware as well. The technology sector can be undervalued, but the utilities, for example, is actually overvalued. If you balance it out, like what SW Tom says, it's pretty much fair price, right? Now what Chloe say as well, right? So we're moving forward, we talk about Grova versus value la versus dividends. Uh, I don't think here I will actually talk much about dividends because dividends is pretty much straightforward. Uh, so I'm going to cross it out. Let's talk about growth versus value. What's the difference between growth, growth versus value? Simple. When you talk about growth stock, you want to make sure that the business is profitable. If the business is not profitable, let's not talk about growth la, because you can't see whether this, this company is growing in the first place, right? If, if the company is not earning, then, then grow what? On what basis of growth? From no grow become no grow or, or what, right? So we want to see profitable businesses. That is a growth, all right? For value, we want to look for companies that are under value, all right? So very simple. In terms of um, growth companies, profitable business, we look at like, like a few examples. Like, no, normally people, when talk about growth stocks, they will link it to all the technological companies. I'm not sure whether you guys realized it. So I put in five, uh, four examples over there. Apple, la, Microsoft, la, Snow, la, uh, New. Apple and Microsoft, I don't think I need to go through. Everybody knows that it's a true blue growth company. It's growing very, very well. Let's talk about Snow and New. Guys, do you know whether Snow is actually profitable or not? Or is it is it a real growth stock per se? Okay, let me go to stream yards. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, in the meantime. Not... Okay, so while while waiting for uh you guys to type out the answer for Issa, all right. So just answer one question from uh Tom as asking in BOSS, what is the key objective? Is it to get the premium or buy the company? Now, very importantly, is when you do BOSS option strategy, right? Um, you don't mind getting the stock. And that is why, on top of that, you get to collect premium. So I think it depends on what is your objective as well, right? Some people prefer doing BOSS just to get the premium, and that's why they will look at the technical analysis to make sure that uh, the tendency of them getting the, the stock is lesser. However, when I do BOSS option strategy, I really don't mind getting the stock. So that's why, uh, from my perspective, it's actually a way to collect stocks. So at the end of the day, it really depends on your objective, and that's why your approach will be slightly different as well. Yeah, I hope that clarifies your question as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. To be honest, you need to you need ultimately own the stocks if you if, if that's the fair price that you actually want it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So coming back to snow, coming back to snow, earning per share. Hey, earning per share is negative. Eh? The company when you're making money, okay, I got positive free cash flow, but then the return of equity, the net profit margin, all negative. It just shows that this company is not making money. If the company is not making money, how confident are you that? you're going to make money tomorrow or next year or two years later or 10 years later or maybe not in our lifetime, 
we do not know, right? So we, we don't so so this is not a true blue growth company, even for new. I know that during COVID period, uh, there's a lot of people talking about new and a lot of people like new saying that it's a it's an EV la, in China la, you know, there's a lot of prospects about it. But hey, again, earning per share is negative, return on equity negative, profit margin negative, net income, wah, cannot la, everything negative la, then there's no growth per se, right? So so when we talk about growth company, yes, um, a lot of technological companies are growth companies, but the thing is not all technological companies are growth companies. You need to understand what is the definition of growth la, rather than just falling for the, the general consensus about it. Very important. In terms of um, undervalued businesses, um, let me eat. Yeah, so we got uh, some energy company, Walmart, Google, and, and Disney as well. So I, I can't remember what's NEE. Uh. Can anybody refresh me what's NEE? Uh? <laughs> I, I took it there. I kind of I forgotten about it. All right. Wait, NEE? Yeah, NEE. Let me see. NEE. It's, a, it's uh, an energy, right? Nexta, Nextra Energy. Ah, uh, yes, correct. Right. Uh, next era energy. Yeah, it's an energy company. Wow. So I do it, yeah, I forgot already. So I'm I'm saying here that hey energy uh, energy sector is actually good eh? can be undervalued or not. Even Walmart, I actually rule out that's undervalued business. Why is that so? Let us go and look back into Jita. Huh? Today I'm not going to go uh, very in-depth about POSS, how you do valuations or whatsoever, but I wanted you guys to actually understand the main concept lah, of it. NEE, if I go to NEE here, back to the fact sheets, right? So, so Isabella is oh. revising with every single one of you what you have learned in our POS. You know, you learn to evaluate whether it's a good company. You learn to, in the first place, assess whether it's a good company first. So even before you go to valuation, you need to assess it, all right? So anybody yeah. remember what our, what's our criteria? What's our 10-step checklist, okay? Uh, maybe you can type it in the chat. For those who just came last weekend, you should be more than enough to remember every single thing that we just taught you guys okay yes, it's a yes. Continue. Please, please remember i want very important please remember <laughs> okay so back to energy uh you look at it uh, since 2014 uh, it's two it's about two times two times two times then suddenly three times okay uh, close one eye then now four times that uh, right so so what happened recently we want to link everything to, to the micro economy to understand what happening recently is it because really because the company grow very huge the price to book ratio is actually uh, um getting in alignment of increasing trend um you know certain companies are really on increasing trend which is pretty normal but what's happening so we know ukraine russia and then the energy the the the, the oil the oil issues you know in in, in the west energy Ta-da! we saw that pretty much now it's really very much overvalued so can we say that it's undervalued based on the PV ratio? Not really, not really, right? It's expensive. So this is the kind of stocks that you don't want to actually um, put in too much money in because it's overvalued, even for Walmart. Walmart. Even for Walmart also. So all these all these companies, uh, when you do valuation, uh, there's a very, very distinct trend one uh, that you can actually take a look. Even the Walmart PB ratio for 2023, five times left. Uh, it used to be three times and dropped to two times, okay, back to three times, and then now five times. It's very overvalued, yeah? All right? So these are the small little uh, bits uh, that you guys actually can actually um, pick up to know whether it is actually a value company or a growth company and whether it's undervalued or overvalued. That's something that uh, as investors for us to, to discern out. Um, of course, I did not go into Google and Disney because we all know that it's pretty much beaten down these days also, lah. Uh. All right. Hey, hi Daniel. Hi, 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 hi from, from USA. USA. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Really early for, for the USA. Right? I think it's like what seven a.m. or eight a.m. in the morning. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. It's ten thirty nine p.m. in Singapore. <laughs> All right. So let me just continue. All right. So as I mentioned just now, uh, let me test you guys again. Uh. is all technology stocks are all technological stocks growth companies. Is it a true or is it a myth? Guys, this one must be very, very clear. T yeah, or M. T is truth. M stands for myth. So, or is it true or myth? Oh, for Daniel, it's 9 40 a.m. in the morning. Wow, that's good. Good time to, to get your morning started with a lot of learning. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. Okay, I think I think I think most of the 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 Singaporeans here or the Asians. Um, oh, John said it's oh. a myth. Myth. Yes, yes, guys, yes, I'm so thankful. Yes, it is a me, ma. please, uh, please. Uh, not all technological stocks are growth stocks. You need to do your due diligence to see whether they are actually earning money. Okay, so Daniel, maybe you would like to actually look back into our recording. Um, yeah, because in the earlier session, we actually made a, a distinct clarification between what's a growth stock and what's a value stock and what defines both of it. Lah. Um, if I were to simplify it, growth stocks are where companies, the businesses are actually making money and value is where actually the price to book ratios are, are not extraordinarily, extraordinarily high, right? Right? Um, okay, so let me continue. So, so strategy of a successful investor, uh, you need to namaste a bit. Okay, you need to zen for a bit. Because why? We don't want our emotions to take a hold of us. So you want to be very clear. Everything has to be very logical. Like what Warren Buffett, he doesn't let anything affect him, right? He doesn't care about the volatility in the market. He doesn't care whether it's up or down, whether, whether I don't know, the, the, the government wants, wants to, I mean, um, uh, what's that thing called, huh? The stock buyback are good or bad, lah, you know. No, he doesn't care about all those things. Warren Buffett himself say in the short term, the stock market acts like a voting machine. Mm -hmm. And the long term, it is a weighing machine, right? A lot of things can happen in the short term, but in the long term, it's going to weigh, not weigh you down, but weigh your assets up, right? So, so this is the, the, the idea of it. You want to relax uh, when investing. Always look at the fundamental of the business first fundamental first i know some of you guys like myself I, I i do like to look a bit of technical but technical is there after that will never supersede fundamental if the company is not fundamentally good and you do technical first there is a very very high risk that you might go haywire all right because there's not there's no guidance there's nothing that guides you there's not no consistency all right, so guys, always understand the fundamental aspect of the business first. All right, those are uh, those three points that I covered earlier: business model la, the the comparative advantage la, as well as the risk. Always understand the fundamentals. Also, want to know the management leadership. Okay, um, thereafter, when it comes to valuation, determine if you are going for a growth play, uh, value play, or dividend play. All right, um. There might there might be times where it's a combination like a growth stock that is undervalued, sure la, I mean like sure la. But most of the time in the normal market situation, it's either you look for growth value or dividend because why we cannot give you a very distinct um um check everything kind of checklist la. You need to understand which category are you going for, which category does the stock belong in, and you follow your strategy, the strategy that BOS actually taught. Right. Thereafter, as mentioned, you can incorporate all your different technical analysis to determine the momentum. But at the end of the day, do not expect to pick the bottom of the market. That is never going to happen, guys. I used to do technical analysis. Um, you you do hundred times, you might be successful only maybe ninety times. Oh, sorry. You do hundred times, you might be only successful for maximum ten times. Right. So so. When it comes to a full, um, full blown technical analysis, it's very hard because it's all based on your own interpretation of how the market is going to be like your own guesswork, and different people have different guesses. You know, there are certain. I think I think Warren Buffett has a saying that it doesn't make sense. Ah, uh, if you can read the the, the chart right in the upwards position, and then you turn the chart over over to balik right, hundred eighty degrees right, and then you still have the same conclusion, then huh? Where is the consistency here? There's no consistency. There's no fundamentals here. So, guys, don't expect to use technical analysis to guide your full investment strategy, right? As an investor, you, mean, you must be very, very um, this, uh, certain that fundamentals first. You can use technical to support, to see the momentum, but not technical fully, right? If I could show you these two button chart. In the global financial crisis, the 08 crisis, it is very much a like a like a like a Nike la, just to it shape. Okay, let me put it in Nike just to it shape. It's very much gentler 
there's uh, there's different points that you do not know whether eh, what's what's low can go lower you know it's it's it's, it's a process the bottom up is a process it is not a point in time right as compared to covid-19 pandemic it is very very unique because covid-19 it is a point a very distinct v shape of which most of the of the proper economy crisis I, I use the word proper economy crisis is because COVID-19 pandemic it is not an economic crisis right it's just because of COVID and then every, everybody locked down and then becomes a crisis but it is not a usual economic crisis that, that is caused by financial issues financial situated issues right so moral of the story is don't try to pick the bottom because you can never pick the bottom you do not know when it's going to rebound and there will be multiple points in time that's going to test the yeah. bottom. And I, just, and I just want to add on that, like just like what Isabella said, like you can't, you can never truly rely on technical analysis to get the bottom or even get a pick, right? And that's why it's so important that, you know, with the margin of safety that you learn from BOS that really buying good businesses, only buy them when they are undervalued, that's how you really add extra safety to your investment. Right. And I totally agree with what Saw said, right? Like always make sure you also have enough cash for rainy days. So depends on your life stage, depends on uh, what is your portfolio size, right? You shouldn't be investing 100% of your cash all the time, right? I, I, I think it's pretty scary if you don't have any cash left in case uh, anything just happened, right? Emergency, rainy days, it can happen. So put aside certain funds for investment, put aside certain funds that it's really for savings or for rainy days that you should not even touch them, right? So that you can have the peace of mind that even when your portfolio is going to crash because the market is tanking, right? Which has happened last year. You are not worried because you know your your cash reserve is still there, right? You can always rely on that as well. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's a combination of both concentration as well as diversification. Know when to concentrate your assets. Know when to diversify your assets. That is very, very, very important. Lah. Right? Um, move on to the last page. Chloe, maybe you want to take over? Yeah, so I think uh, throughout this sharing, I believe all of you guys also have this sensing that it's actually so important not to time the market because once again, nobody can ever predict the market, right? And if you were trying to time the market, I think this is a very, very interesting chart that you guys can see, right? If you invested all day, that means regardless whether the market is doing well or doing not well, right? If you put your $10,000 into invested in just the US S&P 500 index, right? From 1980 all the way to 2018, right? That means for so many decades, you just keep on investing your $10,000 staying invested. Your $10,000 will have become $650,000, right? Which is on your left-hand side. However, if you are trying to time the market, trying to be smart, right? And then if you just miss that five days, uh, the best five days over the past uh, past so many decades, right? Like about, about, um, about 30 decades, right? 30 years, right? If you just miss that 30 to 40, uh, among this, just the five days, uh, your return dropped by 35%. And then if you keep on timing and timing and you miss the best 50 days, your return is a whooping down by 90%, right? So that's why your $10,000 only become $57,000 instead of the $650,000. So that is why it's so important. Don't time the market. Instead, really buy into good businesses and hold on to them as long as the valuation is still reasonable. Yeah, I, uh, so this is... Uh, Isa, do you have anything that you want to add on for this? Yeah, I totally agree. La. I mean, like, like for us... um. People, people like us, if you are working like nine to five, how much time, how much energy, how much effort do we have to actually look at the chart every single day, right? To actually monitor, hey, is it, is it, is it, is it, is it going to turn? Is it going to turn? Is it, is it the bottom? Is it going to go bottom again? Then, you know, certain people, when, when we do technical analysis in the past, we do like A, B, C, D, there's a certain patterns that, that, that we look at the market now then it's, it's, it's way too much effort. Lah. Then you will end up missing a lot of times already. So there's actually no point in um, in really timing the market. I believe that investing should be made easy, not to complicate things. Know your strategy, follow your strategy and simplify things. Lah. Um, yeah, I think, I, think, I, think, I think it's very important for us all to simplify life. <laughs> Don't live life so complicatedly. <laughs> And, yeah. and investing, the simpler it is, the better, right? And that's why even Correct. during our, our BOS class, we really 
want to simplify the investing uh, uh, method step by step for you guys so that you know how to differentiate good companies so that you know how to know whether is this a company that is undervalued or very expensive that you shouldn't be buying right now. But I'm also very curious, how many of you here, right, have attended our recent two-day BOS? If you have attended, can you type BOS in the chat? Okay, if you have attended, type BOS. Huh? So Isa was there. Okay, MD <laughs> says it's a very laggy for you. Okay, maybe it's like uh, you need to switch to a place with a better Wi-Fi connection or something, all right? Uh, if not, use your mobile data. I think should be fine as well, all right? Uh, very, oh, okay. Eh? Oh, it's also very lag for, for KT2. Oh, uh, Isa, am I lagging? No, very lag. Like, my side, my side is also okay. Hey, we are both talking like 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 we are pro <laughs> we are perfectly fine. <laughs> okay. Oh no. Oh no. Then did they miss what happened in the past? How about now? Is it okay now? Is it better now, guys? Is this fine fine here? Oh, Ken, Ken is fine. Andy, Andy, John, uh Stanley, is it better right now? Uh, yes, okay, we will have the replay. We will have the replay inside the Facebook group that you are in. So don't worry about it. Okay, but in the meantime, I have an even better news uh, than the, just the replay itself. But I also want to ask how many of you attended our recent two-day BOS? If you have attended just last weekend, uh, can you type BOS in the chat, which is our two days very, very uh, in-depth value investing uh, uh, two-day workshop to really share with you how to analyze a good company, when is a good time to buy, and how to do your portfolio sizing as well. Every half, huh, still very lag. Uh. That is so strange. It's, wow. uh, we, we have no problem as well. Hmm. Okay, I hope BOS. Okay, so Adeline attended BOS. Okay, who else? Who else? Who else attended BOS? Let me see. Okay. Okay, let me see. Uh, are you guys okay right now? Okay, because I'm going to share with you a very, very amazing news. So, right? so for example, John attended VOS. Okay, my internet also lagging. Huh, maybe you guys, okay, maybe you guys tell me what brand of internet you are using. I will make sure that I don't use that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then maybe some of you guys can uh watch the replay in a bit. But don't worry. Okay, so but I can see most of you guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you are on your phone, maybe you switch to your phone, you should be able to uh watch it better as well. Use your own data. Yeah. So okay, let me share with you the okay, Singtel. Uh Calvin, I will make sure I don't use Singtel. Okay, but they are the largest, largest provider in Singapore. All right. So Oh, you attended during the end of March, which is, uh, okay, okay. That means like one month ago, guys. Okay, so I have a super great news for you. So how many of you, because you attended BOS, right, then you find it useful, right? That, that means it gives you better clarity, just like what Isabella said, better clarity in terms of analyzing a company, better clarity in terms of how to buy it when it's undervalued. If you feel that it gives you better clarity and it's useful for you, can you type useful in the chat? Okay, Daniel said that your internet is very good. All right, so that means, okay, it's Singtel problem. <laughs> so I believe all of you guys are using Singtel. That's right. So what's going to happen is actually during these two days, right, for those who just recently attended, you'll realize that actually we really teach a lot in depth in terms of how Warren Buffett, he him, himself analyzed a company so that uh, he has been, that's how he has been compounded his, uh, let me show you Warren Buffett net worth. Uh. Right for so many years, right, and and you will know that actually value investing it's a very very powerful uh strategy that as long as you are willing to stick to it long term, right, that's how you are going to grow your wealth as well, right. So let me share with you for those who are still very curious about what is Warren Buffett's net worth, all right, when he was eighty eight years old, all right, he had eighty five billion dollars true value investing and today all right what is warren buffett's net worth today today it's 109 billion dollars so uh five years basically 88 years old that was uh, not, uh that was 2000 uh that was like four years ago right in about four years time he he compounded his net worth even more right to 100 and 
close to ten billion dollars, right? Hundred and ten billion dollars, and that's why we truly believe that you know if you know how to invest safely using the value investing system, that's how you can grow your wealth as well safely, like 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 Warren Buffett, right? So MW say very useful. Uh, John is saying very useful, fantastic. All right, so this is what's going to happen. All right, so for those who find this useful, all right, we really want to invite you to share this with your friend and right now okay only for today uh, by the way we are doing a very special webinar you can say that you can see that suddenly you get notified right because we just want to make sure we push this good news to as many people as possible but it's only exclusive because you are here and that's why you will be aware of the, this news if you are not here you're going to miss this uh you're going to miss this webinar definitely your friend will not be able to uh benefit from this as well so let me share with you what is the good news so as you know, for those who attended our program, you know that you need to pay some amount of fees, right, to join us. But today, all right, only for today, we want to really help more people. And that's why instead of your friends coming here, all right, to pay a fee to join us, what's going to happen is, all right, our two days class, uh, this is what we are going to do it for the first time. Okay, guys, for the first time, uh, we are going to, all right, give it out completely free of charge all right so what's going to happen okay i'm going to for those who want to invite your friends to come and learn and for those in fact if you want to reset and relearn right free of charge huh? this is the link that uh i will be sharing with you very soon but firstly all right if you register with us okay for those who have not attended this is what's going to learn we are going to learn as well so firstly you are going to learn the buffer way of investing right which is the our ask if friend model how to analyze a good company that so many of you find it useful right and then what to buy right using our checklist when to buy right which is valuation and most, most importantly it's a position sizing as well so we are going to teach you when to buy when to sell how to create your own portfolio as well and usually if you join us right last time for for those who actually attended our physical class before it's a few thousand dollars right but then because right now everything is online okay and only for the first time uh, right now we want to give it out as completely free of charge so that more people can get benefit during this period of time so uh, your friends can actually basically register for our two days workshop complete for free all you to do is to fill in for example i just do a demo like, okay chloe then uh write a number here all right and then for example okay after that Okay, I'm just going to send. But one more thing, okay? Apart from this good news, right? That your friends can attend for free. Yeah? What is going to happen is if you are the one who invite your friend to come, you will even get additional prizes, all right? So what are the prizes you are going to get, all right? So let me share with you. Firstly, if you have three friends who sign up through your own link, which I'm going to share with you how you can get it, all right? You will have our... Uh, founder of this school, Buffett Online School, all right, Sean Xia, he actually wrote a very good book called Gone Fishing with Buffett. We are going to send you the digital copy of it once you have three friends to sign up. And then you have five friends to sign up, we are going to send you the financial freedom calculator so that you can calculate, oh, how long do you take to be financially free? How much do you need to save up? How much do you need to invest, all right? And then if you have 10 sign up, we are going to give you Warren Buffett's portfolio so that you can see what is Warren Buffett investing, how much is he investing and what is the percentage allocation. And last but not least, if you have 15 sign up, you will have a free ETF online course that is worth $297. And one more very, very interesting and I think exciting thing that we are running as we are running as a contest. So if you have, you are the top three people who get most number of friends to sign up through your link, this is what's going to happen. You will get to win amazing prizes uh, worth close to $1,800. All right. So what are the prizes? As you know, for our for our, our company, we actually run different kind of program for those, for those who want to level up in different ways. We have our option class. We have our uh, metaverse class. We also have our creator of online courses, right? Which is the compounding roadmap class. So if you are our top three referrals, all right? Inviting the, uh, the most friends, this is what's going to happen. We are going to give you, all right? The next level combo platinum pass for not just yourself but one more person as well. So basically, it's for two people 
both you and your friend or maybe you and your spouse or, or your daughter, your son, whoever who want to learn together, all right, we'll give you the two-day tickets to our three-day options class, all right, that is already worth like 997. And then also our two-day ticket to our three-day COC, which is a compounding creator income roadmap class, as well as the three-day metaverse crash hot class. So everything add up together, it's uh, easily over $1,700. So if you are the top three, how do you know whether you are the top three? So if you scroll down more below, right? You can see that uh, the more friends that you invite, the more points that you get. So for every one, one friend, you will have 10 points. So let's say right now, who is the leader uh, inside the contest? Because the contest has started, all right? So you can see right now, okay? If you go, go down below, here's how to win the contest, right? So let me show you who is the leader right now, okay? Let me go to the page number one because this is page four. So I need to go to page number one and you can see, ta -ta, okay, the top, top, uh, leader right now, okay, it's Bowen. He has has 430 points, okay? While for Gan Yi, he has 60 points. So you can see it's a far cry la, from, uh, very, very far away from Bowen. But guys, don't worry, okay? Bowen is not going to be entitled to, to winning this contest because he is one of our trainer to demonstrate how does this contest actually work. So he's here to, to just to showcase to you, but he will not win your prize. Huh? So don't worry. So right now, actually, the top person is Gani, right? So for whoever who is the top three, you are going to win all these uh, prizes. On top of that, if you keep like three people, five people, 10 sign up, you will have additional prizes as well. So this is where you can uh, start inviting your friends through your own personal invite link over here, which uh, if I copy right now, it will be my own uh, 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 invitation link. So it doesn't make sense, right? So in order for you to have your own invitation link, I'm going to share with you the, the link right now, okay, to register for your own link, okay? So all you need to do is go to rebrand.ly slash, okay, let me just also type it in the chat, huh? rebrand.ly slash EOS free. So it's the first time we are running it and uh, and wait, did I key in correctly? Hold on now, let me just double check. All right, uh, give me a while. Let me just make sure. Misa, are you able to help me check whether it's the link that I just sent, is it working? Give me a while, I'll just copy and paste it. Thank this you. Is, okay. is it working? Yeah, it is. Yeah. All right. Okay. So once again, I just send in the link one more time. All you need to do is to go to this link and then register for your... Okay. So once you register, right, basically you can re-attend our two days class completely free of charge as well. So feel free to do that. Our next class is actually happening very soon. And there is a cutoff data to this contest. So when is this contest ending? Because our next class is actually happening in uh, May, which is 6 to 7 May. So that's why the contest cutoff date will be the day earlier, right? Which is the 5th May, uh, 2, 3, 5, 9 p.m., right? That's a Friday night. Then Saturday is the class. Saturday and Sunday is the class already. So that is why if you want to uh, get invite your friends to come and learn investing, all right, and, and really share with them step by step how you have learned from us, right, how to value a good company, how to buy them a good price. And right now, you can actually help them to get started completely free of charge as well. And on top of that, all right, you will get to earn additional prizes and feel free to share with your friends. For example, you hit three sign up, you can share the same digital ebook, right? It's a link, huh? you can send it to your friends as well. You can also share that with them the financial calculators, your buffer portfolio, whoever or uh, whatever prices that you get you can share with them and but of course the, only for the top three uh, sign, uh referrals all right you will have our next level combo platinum pass right for two people right so i hope you guys are excited to uh share with your friends and excited to really invite them i think most importantly get started investing safely as well Okay, it's working. Huh? Thank you so much, Cal. All right. So, all right. So, Calvin said you just joined the Facebook group. Very good. It was a super class. I'm waiting. Okay, I was in super class BOSS, but I was waiting for the record. Oh, okay, okay. That's good. That's good. 
All right, we will be sending you. You you, you mean like for our two day BOS? Uh, two day BOS is it? Okay, if you if you join our previous BOS recording, all right, then you should probably have the recording as well. As long as you actually top up for that, so okay, very good. So any additional questions that we have uh regarding these uh very very amazing initiative that we are running all right so that to help more people if you have any additional questions feel free to let us know now okay but very importantly guys you need to go to this link that inside this banner right now go and register for your own account that means once you register feel free to come and receipt and we learn together with us as well and that's where you're going to refresh and and basically see some current op opportunities together with us during uh, may as well right and on top of that uh, once you sign up there will be the the page where you actually can see your own uh link so make sure you copy over here which is the link here right make sure you copy this link and share it to your friend so that you, uh every sign up that is under your link it will be automatically tracked over here so that's how the leaderboard will be reflecting every single day as long as the new sign up they will it, it will automatically be updated and you can also use that to see where are you right now all right in this uh, uh we have like 14 pages are uh, 14 pages of people who have already registered their account. And as soon as you started uh, referring more people, inviting more people, your scores will definitely go up. And I hope you can overtake Bowen and really uh, <laughs> trash him in, in uh, inviting people to come. And, and But most importantly, Bowen will not snatch away uh, the prizes from you. So don't worry, okay? Regardless whether you win him or not, all right? As long as you're the top three, we will give you the prizes as well. Okay, so any additional questions? Okay, if not, okay, I hope you guys had a very, very great, uh, very, very great learning session together with us. All right, maybe type down one of your greatest learning point from this one hour sharing. It's like, wow, actually, we already passed one hour. So type down your greatest learning points from our re uh, most recent sharing right now. And, uh, and I, we're also looking forward to seeing you our upcoming BOS as well because it's just happening in about three weeks time right now it's already mid-April it's like in about three weeks time the BOS class will be happening and during that time uh, Isa and I will actually will be going to the US so we will be meeting Mary Buffett over there as well so we're excited okay. <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks so, so much Kelvin for tuning in and learning from us as well hope you had a lot of fun as well Okay, so for those who join our May BOS, you'll be seeing uh, Bowen and Glenn. Both of them are super, super experienced investors as well as very, very experienced investing coach as well who is going to teach you step-by-step step how can you use the buffer way of investing to invest safely as well. All right, so you will definitely enjoy the class. All right, all right. So with that, okay, I hope everybody had a good, good night and we will see you in our next sharing. All right, see you guys. Bye. See you. Good night. Bye.